Hey guys, welcome back to another action figure review. Today we have another figure from the Metal Slug series taking a look at Fio by Tunshi Studios. The front of the box is themed in the character selection screen from the video games with an open window to view the figure. The back of the box has a faded out picture of Fio posed with her pistol as well as some information on how to handle the figure, website links, and a holographic sticker showing off the SNK license. The figure is sealed in a plastic wrap with the serial number at the top and a barcode at the bottom with the Tunchi logo. To get to the cardboard box, you must cut and remove the plastic wrapped around the box. After opening up the cardboard, the final display box can be easily slid out. We're finally able to reach the actual figure now, where just like the other releases, the front flap is closed with magnets and the instructions are at the top and the plastic tray is tightly packed in. Fiolina Jeremy, or Fiel for short, makes her first debut in the Metal Slug 2 where she became a popular character among fans and seen throughout the series ever since. She's the only daughter of a wealthy Italian family, whose tradition is to send their firstborn son to the military. Since Fiel is an only child, she was sent instead. While her father has military connections and tried to keep Fio away from any real combat in the military, Fio would eventually join the Sparrows unit and join with Tarma, Marco, and Eri. Fio can be seen here in her classic outfit, a ponytail hairstyle covered by a hat, a tan vest, and a white tank top and brown shorts. Tunchi Studios gave Fio a more modern design with the mix between realistic and anime style appearance as opposed to the extremely exaggerated look of the video game selection screen. While Fio has a lot of official artwork altering her appearance, Tunchi Studios have settled on a classic look for Fio, giving us a middle ground for all of her different appearances. Let's take a look at some of the details. For the review, we will install the accessories afterwards, so we'll take a look at Fio with her glasses installed later in the review. Starting off with the head, we can notice the big glossy eyes, painted wide open. We can notice the shine that they give off, with a bit of redness to her nose, cheeks, and lipstick. Her brown hair spills out of her tan hat, with a few short strands wildly pointing everywhere randomly. We get a better look at the hat and ponytail sticking out of the back. Small details like the ear, smooth hair strands, and textured fabric effect on the hat can be seen here. On the front of the chest, we have the iconic tan vest and tank top Fio wears in most of her appearances. The clothing here is made of a tight, form-fitting material that's already stretching just by being worn on the figure. There's not much room left for adjustments or removal. A better look at the vest shows us the details on the cloth clothing of the figure. Small pockets and flaps are actually sewed onto the material. Turning the figure around, at the back we see more stitching details on the vest and some of her bare skin on her waist exposed. Fio has tiny shoulders and arms with almost no muscle tone here, giving her a slim appearance. For the hands, we have a brown leather bracer around the wrist with the pre-installed hands in a gripping position to hold onto weapons. At the waist, we have a pair of tan shorts detailed with a brown leather belt, a silver buckle, and more stitching giving the clothing a detail of pockets and a front zipper. Here we can see some muscle tones on the stomach with the visible navel sculpted in. Looking at the side, we see more stitching for the pockets with the black fabric for the inside of the pocket. Attached to the belt, we have a large brown leather bag. The brown bag has a thick leather texture effect with two small straps keeping the bag closed. Underneath, more stitching gives us the appearance of two back pockets. With the thighs and legs exposed, we have armor covering up the knees, two knee pads with cloth underneath to pad the legs from the armor. We wrap up the details of the figure with the boots, orange and brown leather combat boots with a bit of dark grime painted on, giving them a worn out look. Worn inside of the boots, we have a pair of brown wool socks. Let's check out the articulation of the figure. Normally, in most of my reviews, I would remove any pre-installed accessories or clothing to show off the full range of motion. But with Fio, and just like all the other Metal Slug figures from Tunchi Studios, it's advised not to remove the clothing, as doing so would permanently damage them. So, with that being said, we have rotation at the head and a decent bit of up and down range of motion. The neck joints here are being hidden by the soft, rubbery skin. Shoulders that open and rotate all the way around, that also includes a butterfly joint that will be hindered by the clothing. Biceps that rotate. 
double jointed elbows with an extreme range of motion that can be bent tightly on either limb. Wrists that rotate and bend forward and backwards. We do have a body joint underneath the tank top with rotation and good forward and backwards crunching. We have similar range at the waist, able to rotate, bend forward and back and on its side. The legs are where the articulation really starts to be hindered by the clothing. We only have a very short range on the legs before the clothing starts to get into the way. While the clothing is made of a soft stretchy material, there's only so little range to move before you really start feeling the clothing start to stretch. This applies on most of the range on the thighs, limiting much of the range. While some might feel comfortable stretching the clothing to the limit, I personally wouldn't. We do have double jointed knees. You can move the knee pads, but once again, the knee pads and cloth will stop a tight bend. Lastly, we have the ankles of the boots, able to rotate and bend up and down with the socks not really interfering with any range here. So in total, a very minimal range for the lower half of the figure with some great range on the arms. Tunchi Studios lists the Metal Slug series of figures in the 112 inch scale and Feel stands just under 6 inches. Next to some Hasbro size 6 inch figures, we can see Feel blends in well at this scale, if only looking a little cartoony next to the normal proportion figures. Next we have Jada Toys Street Fighter figures, another 6 inch scale series, where we can see the height starts to match up, but the proportions are a little big on the Metal Slug figures. Up to McFarlane's 7 inch scale, we can start to see Tunchi Studios runs on the smaller side of the 6 inch scale. And for any anime figure collectors out there, we have a few Figma figures to compare them to, giving us a better look at how different the scale of the Metal Slug figures are. Let's check out all the accessories Feel comes with. First up, we have an alternate head for Feel, with an open mouth and closed eyes, resembling a yawn or taking a bite. The head is nearly identical to the original with only the expression changed. Installing the head is very simple. The original head can be easily pulled off with a little bit of force, and the alternate head sockets in just as easy. We have a decorative grenade box accessory with the removable top that inside are the glasses cleverly packed away for safety. The glasses are extremely small, sharp, and very lightweight. Normally I would provide footage of installing the glasses, but they are so lightweight and tiny that I personally required using tweezers to install them. While they are made of metal, that makes them a little less fragile, they are still a pain to install. We have a black submachine gun, detailed with a bit of grime and silver scratches. The ammo magazine can be pulled out, revealing a single bullet, a very nice detail. We have a steel colored revolver with the brown grip, its sculpting is very finely detailed. We have Feel's signature axe, all black with the steel blade with the blade being able to be removed, revealing the tonfa underneath as its own weapon. We have a pair of trigger finger hands meant to be used with the guns. These hands easily slide into the submachine gun and also hold the revolver. We get a single hand in an open palm gripping position. This hand is used on the submachine gun as well. A single open palmed hand used to place on her waist or carry objects. We have a small slice of a sandwich detailed with red meat and other toppings in the center. And a pair of pinching hands for grabbing the sandwich with. The sandwich perfectly fits in between these fingers. The instruction booklet does give a warning about warming up the hands before swapping them. The plastic the hands are made of gets extremely soft when heated up and make swapping them very easy. I do recommend heating up the hands every time you want to swap them out. After heating up the hands, they can be easily pulled off with a little bit of force. Afterwards, heating up the new hands, they'll socket right into the tiny wrist joint. Already attached to the figure is the leather bag. It has two small pegs that can be removed to reveal a small storage area on the figure. We have the drop shot weapon effect, a small ball painted in a gunmetal color. We have a set of four World War II style stick grenades, each having their own dirt and grime painted on. 
Unfortunately, the grenades are just too thick to install into the default grabbing hands, as the fingers inside just get in the way. A better fit would be the trigger finger hands if you really want to display feel with the grenade. We have two large tank ammo shells to complete the grenade box accessory. After removing the glasses, you can fill the grenade box to match the appearance of the in-game power-up. We get a grey and orange iron lizard upgrade box. The two red letter eyes are made out of metal, while magnet is hidden inside of the box letting you place the letters on top of it. We have the actual iron lizard weapon effect, fully detailed with working wheels and the detachable flame effect on the back. A yellow banana, seen in game as a score reward. And a small ruby, another in game score reward. A small yellow square fabric used as a blanket for the picnic emote Field does in game. We have a wooden and steel base seen on all the other Metal Slug figures. It has a hole to attach the arm onto, while the back has the SNK and Tunchi Studio logos. We have the base hook with the claw that closes by itself. The hook easily screws right into the base, tightly and securely. Once the figure is installed, the hook and base hold the figure tightly, keeping her firmly in place. This small bit of plastic allows you to merge multiple bases together. Tunchi Studios Fio is a must-have for all Metal Slug fans. Her cute and nerdy appearance of this version makes a great appearance for Fio, and is a decent halfway point between a realistic appearance and an anime-style look. She doesn't look too cartoony, but also has a cute anime appearance, it's really a solid mix of both and represents the character of Feel very well. The amount of quality that went into the figure cannot be missed either. After a few delays to resculpt the body, we can notice that the upper half of the chest is made of a soft rubbery plastic. It doesn't have much impact on the articulation, but makes the neck look a lot cleaner and gives the skin in the area a bit of softness. You're likely to pay a premium price for this figure, especially if you didn't pre-order. So quality is a huge factor with this series, and the clothing and the amount of accessories really gets what you pay for. Just like the other Metal Slug figures in the series, we have a great amount of accessories to work with. I'm really impressed with the submachine gun, with its removable magazine that has painted bullets inside. Details like that really give the figure a premium feel. Unfortunately, Tunchi Studios went style over function on the clothing, especially on the shorts as they heavily restrict most of the range here, it's very noticeable. You'll likely see promotional images of Fio in her sitting eating pose, but now I know why it wasn't accurate to the in-game pose, because the figure just can't hit that level of articulation with the cloth gear. You'll have to settle with the figure's great upper body articulation, that really has all the perfect joints where you need them to get some great gun poses. The glasses, while high quality and made of metal, are extremely lightweight and thin, making them easy to lose or bend, making them a pain to install or remove. Fortunately, they stay on secure once installed, but if the figure were to ever fall over, those glasses are gone. I really do enjoy Feel. It's for sure going to be a holy grail of action figures. With such a high quality and almost underground release, you really have to be a hardcore Metal Slug fan to know that these figures are getting released at all. Tunchi Studios' bodies are always impressive, looking clean with joints that aren't ugly, I just wish the clothing they used wasn't so restrictive. A lot of my complaints are very small, but for the premium price of these figures must be pointed out, as this is far from a perfect figure, but it's exactly what I was expecting out of Tunchi Studios. Again, I gotta say, the quality of these figures is very high. I don't think anyone would be disappointed in picking Feel up. It's an excellent representation of the character and looks great with other gaming figures. Feel is a classic character for anyone's collection and definitely worth picking up. Be sure to shop around, as import figures, everyone is offering their own prices on them, so you can definitely still find her for a good price. Alright guys, that's it for this review. Leave a comment letting me know how you like this figure, subscribe, or share this video with your friends to help out the channel.